Hi, welcome to another video, PyPad Mathematics. I am Professor Lamb, and uh, we're going to do a problem, or I'm going to do a problem here that's pretty popular. It's called the handshake problem. There's many different ways people have approached the handshake problem. Uh, they've uh, put people in a room and asked them if everybody shook hands with everybody else exactly once, how many handshakes would take place. Uh, there's other problems that go in where uh, one person enters a room and then a second person enter, enters a room and shakes hands with that person. A third person comes in, shakes hands with those two people. A fourth person comes in, shakes hands with the previous three. And so how many handshakes would take place after 32 people come in the room and they shake hands with everybody that's currently in the room? Uh, so there's another problem like that. But what I'm going to show here is is the kind of the popular one uh, is something like you have five people in a room. Okay. You have five people in a room, and everybody's going to shake hands with everybody else exactly once. Exactly once. That's important. You have to focus in. You're a teacher of mathematics. You see what's going to happen later on, and you want students to not count handshakes twice. So you say exactly once, meaning that once one person shakes hands with the second then you don't count the one where the second shake hands with the first. It's already, they've already shooken hands. That's not a word. I'm making it up. I guess I have uh, mathematical liberties because I'm in mathematics. Ha ha, funny, funny, English teachers watching. Sorry. Uh, anyway, so we have five people in a room, and one way that you can work this, one heuristic, is to act it out. And in a classroom, you can have them get up. They can fist bump because we don't want to pass germs. Uh, or you can have your iPad up. I'm using the app Explain Everything here. And you can simply show. All right, so you got, let's line everybody up down here. Okay, and now, la di da da da, I'm going to shake hands here. One, two, three, four handshakes. So this person has four handshakes. Now, the second person is going to come in, and and whoop, I've already I've already shooken hands with that person, so I just need to go one, two, three handshakes, and I record that three, and then this other one is going to go. Oh, I've already shook hands with those people, so I just got one, two handshakes. So I write a two up there, and then I'm going to do the other. I'm going to go. Oh, I've already shook hands with those people, so I go one. Just got one handshake. And then now in counting, I've already shooken hands with everybody else, so I don't have any. I don't have to put a, you can put zero there. And then you add all that, four plus three plus two plus one plus zero is ten. And uh, then you could, you could do it another way. You can certainly, I'm going to kind of move them all back to where they were. And what you can do now is you can make a, you can draw a picture, okay? And so I'm going to draw a picture here, and I'm on my paper, I've drawn a picture, and now I'm going to record. So I got one, two, three, four handshakes. Four. This one's going to have one, two, three. I've already done that one, so that's three handshakes. And I got one, two, I've already done that one, so that's two handshakes. And then I got one, that's one handshake, and then we're zero again. You add them up, it still equals ten. Okay, that's one. That's another way, or that's one way that you can do it. Uh, another way you can do it is you can make an organized list, and uh, meaning that one is going to shake hands with two, one's going to shake hands with three, one's going to shake hands with four, and one's going to shake hands with five. And so the one, two, three, four, five represent the people. Uh, person one, person two, three, four, and five. Now that one's done that, we start with two. Now we already have the connection between two and one, so we start with two and three, and then three and four, and then four shakes hands with five. And we're done with, oh, I did that wrong. Back up, back up. Math people, you know, math education or math teachers, the magic of erasing. So I'm on the board now, I'm erased, and all the people sitting at the board are like, wait, 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 what'd you do? Sorry about that. Hope you can pause, rewind, see what I did, and then you can uh, record it. But we have two with three, and then two's going to shake hands with four, and then two's going to shake hands with five. Remember, I wanted an organized list, so my organized list is uh, I have one, all the shake, shakes with one, all the shakes with two, 
uh, uh, you know, a Taylor Swift song is coming on my mind right now. Uh, three is going to shake hands with four. Four is going to shake hands with five. Uh, and then, ah, oh, I did it again. What did I do wrong? I did that on purpose. I'm just checking to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> uh, now, three is going to shake hands with five. And then now we do all four shake hands with five. So organized list, we have our person one, person two, person three, and then person four and all the shakes that they do. Um, and then we add them up. So I have four there, three there, two there, and one there. Um, now, what you want to do as a teacher of mathematics is you want to give them an opportunity, give students an opportunity here to explore further. You do this, you have them work it out, we act it out, you get them up in the front and they're, and they're um, fist bumping and counting. Now the question is, what happens if you have 100 people in a room? What happens if we have 100 people inside of a room? And the question is, how many handshakes take place? Oh, wow. Well, I'm really not going to want to draw a picture with 100 little stick figures. I'm not going to want to make an organized list with 100 people. I uh, certainly don't want to put 100 people up in front of the room and then start shaking hands. We'll be there for a long time. That's another math problem right there. How long would it take? Uh, but the, we, need to, we need to model it. We need to find a, a, a formula, an explicit rule that helps us determine how many it is. And what you notice is you notice that we had our, uh, we have our five, we, when we did five earlier, we had five people. We ended up going four plus two, <laughs> four plus three plus two plus one. Okay. If we had six people, we would say five plus four plus three plus two plus one. And then we would have our total there. If we had seven, we'd go six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one. So we would see that and then we would establish a rule. N being N equals the number of people. Okay. So if N equals the number of people, I'm, I'm going to do N minus one, okay, plus n minus two, plus n minus three, plus dot 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 dot, plus n minus, really n, because that gets us down to zero, okay, or all the way down to, you can rewrite that with zero. All right. Wow. All right. So that's one way to algebraically, but is there is there a rule? Is there a way to kind of determine what that is? Uh, and there is, and it, it all goes back to Gauss. Uh, there's a long, long. There's another problem here, another video, but there's a video when you're adding up consecutive numbers. When you're adding up the first consecutive or n consecutive numbers, one all the way up to n, that's an arrow. When you're adding n consecutive numbers, the rule is going to be n times n plus 1 all divided by 2. And the way he did that, he lined them all up, and then he added one in like 100 consecutive numbers. 1 and 100 is 101. 2 and 99 is 101. You ended up having 101 divided by 2. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, you had 50 pairs of 101, so you have 5,050. I say all that, there's another video on it, but you have your rule. n times n plus 1 is going to be the sum of n consecutive numbers. Well, we're doing the sum of n plus 1, or n minus 1 consecutive numbers. So you would plug that in, n minus 1 times n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which results in n minus 1 times n all over 2 and a f better way to write it is n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So our rule over here is going to be n times n minus 1 divided by 2. And there's a, you know, there's a nice little uh, <laughs> 
later on in your mathematical journeys of college students and rigor, you can actually do the proof through induction there. Um, but we're not doing the proof through induction. We're doing the proof through, I know this, and so I can plug in there and I can solve for that. Um, so that's the that's the idea. You have your n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So I got 100, 100 times 99 divided by 2. And really, since we're starting with one less there, that's the n times n plus 1 over 2. A bunch of wonderful stuff. Math teachers, teachers of mathematics, need to know all of this, bunch of this wonderful stuff. You want to give students an opportunity to discover those, to come up with them on their own and find a way to model it on their own. And, and, and it's okay if they just say 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 and 99 plus 98 plus 97 plus 96 all the way down to 1. It will get them there. I always say... You just got to get to Dallas. I want you to get to Dallas. I don't care how you get there. You can take the scenic route or you can take the interstate and get there. But just get to Dallas. You can fly a plane and get there even faster. That's your calculator. Um, point is that we want students to problem solve. We want them to critical think. And this handshake problem is one that can do it. So uh, I thank you for watching. Again, I'm Professor Lamb. This is PyPad Mathematics. Uh, and take care.